Today's victim is this Canon inkjet printer. The model number is MP470. It has an LCD screen, compact flash SD card reader in the front, as well as a USB port, stylus buttons, paper gets fed out the front and fed in the back. It has got a flatbed scanner on top and utilizes thermal printheads. The replacement cost for the printheads for this printer would be $91.77. Around the back we've got the inbuilt power supply USB port for printing and scanning. Let's see what its insides look like. So this one's got a built-in scanner, uh, which is something which obviously scans your document in. And um, I've got these out of my other printers I pulled apart, but the thing with those printers, I just pull them apart and this, I've been trying to figure out how they work. But it's obviously 10 times easier to test the part inside the printer. So today, because the purpose of the scanner bit for me is that I want to make a... Um, a Lego sorting machine and it needs to detect the colours of the bricks as they go past. I've, I've looked at it using a colour sensor but, but it's very narrow and it can only do like one brick at a time but if I had this sensor working maybe I could do lots of bricks at the same time but trying to figure out how this works is quite hard when it's out of the machine because uh, long story short this has got like 10 to 14 pins there's lots of different versions and each pin does something different and the manufacturers um, don't seem to have a standard for those pins, so it's easy to work it out inside the machine when it's running. So that's what we're going to do today before completely disassembling it. We'll be troubleshooting that, and I'll be trying to make up a library as I go along because I'm going to do a lot of printers, I'm going to do a lot of testing, and I'll just put the code number for the sensor. It's called a uh, contact sensor on my website, so you better check them all out. And all the other bits and pieces. I've got another channel which I build things on, so you can check that channel out for all the things I make from the parts from these printers. The whole idea is to recycle as much as I can for the printer, including the panels. So for the panels, I'm hoping to make a like a shredding machine that will shred these down, melt them, and then create filament for a 3D printers. That's the goal. But for now, um, I want to get this top part off. Actually, I don't. What I'll do is, there's a ribbon cable here, and I'm going to find out where that ribbon cable goes to the controller board, and then just try and do a scan and just see where all the pins are, and and use it that way. They're actually, you can use them on an Arduino. You don't need a flash computer or anything to make them work. Just hook it up to Arduino with the right timing. I've seen there's um, a couple of projects which they've used these scanners for. Um, like touch displays so it's sending out because the light's coming in and you just break the beam and then it tells on like a touch display where it is uh, it's got an RGB light on it so when it's scanning across if you watch this video you can see when it starts scanning it's got red green and blue because underneath here it's got a, um, a white reference so it measures the red green and blue case this white reference so it knows what white is and then it scans across and when you Look at the light when it's scanning across, it looks like it's one, like a whitish, purplish, orangish, reddish sort of colour, but it's actually flashing through the colours so quickly, it's going red sample, green sample, blue sample, but you don't see it because it's kind of doing it so quickly, but it's going across, and that's why these scanners are so slow, because the hardware is not, you know, super control, super computer material, it's just a probably old controller, and it's scanning the pixels across the image. There's 2,700 of them normally. So scanning, and then three different color, three different colors, and then uh, storing it in the memory, and then copying it out. So there's a lot going on. But like I say, all these connectors, they can have different amount of pins. They all do different things. So the best thing to do is to fire this up, and then use a multimeter to try and work out what each pin does. It'll be if this is your red pin, a green pin, and a blue pin for the light. 
it's got a clock pin, it's got a latch pin, it's got a power pin, it's got a ground pin. So a minimum, there's going to be seven or eight pins, all right? But ones I've got before, they've had, they've had like 11 of them and 14. It's weird, nothing makes any sense. So the best to do it when it's in the printer. So I'm going to spin this around, try and find out where this ribbon cable goes for the scanner, and do a scan, and see if we can find out which each pin does. I don't have an oscilloscope, so if I can narrow down the LEDs and the ground and the power, it's just a case of trying the other three pins to see what they do. One of those will be an analog pin, so it'll be adjusting a pretty con constant voltage. The other two will be a clock and the latch. But um, let's get around the back and see what's in there. So here's our printer control board which makes this all the singing and dancing and I'm this looks like it's going to the scanner. I don't think it is. most of these things, there's no hint. By the way, this is the scanner cable. So we just need to make sure we've got the right one. I'm thinking it's this one here. The connectors are on the top side, so it's going to be a bit of a mission I'm trying to pin those out, but we shall give it a go. So here's our scanner connector, and it's got 12 pins on it, uh, and they're not going to be marked anywhere right now. It's going to say this pin is for power, this pin is for round, this pin is for clock. So you've got, to, you've got to try and work out what they are. So the easiest one to start off with is the ground, because uh, we know the ground must be connected to something like this screw over here, or the shielding screw, or the shielding will be a ground. So if we just put our I've just got this multimeter set up, so if, I, if it touches, it beeps. So if I put my one probe on there, so if I put one probe on this screw, so if I put one probe on this screw, which is obviously a ground, so if I do both of these together, it should beep. That's a ground. Right, so we just need to find out which pin on here is a ground, and then we can knock that off our list to start with. I found with these 
senses that there's multiple grounds for some reason, more than one. Who knows why? They all go into the same place, so. This one's got a poke air end on it. One isn't. Two isn't. Three isn't. Four isn't. Five is five. So we've got that tone, so five is definitely a ground. Six is not. Seven isn't. Eight isn't. Nine isn't. Ten is. So six and ten. So five and ten are our ground. So now we just need to find what is the power. Well, not just. We've got a lot, we're not even halfway there. We've got to find the power, we've got to find the power to the LEDs, which one of these ones is for the LEDs, which one is for the clock, which one is for the latch. So we're a little while ago, so we'll plug it in and see what we can find out. So the next thing we want to find out is which one's the power pin, because um, hopefully it will be supplying power to the scanner the whole time and it'll be easy to find so we'll change our meter over to volts this one is 23 volts which is a lot so this we might not better really use the scanner at all. This next one is 22 volts. This next one is 21 volts. And this next one is 21 volts. Next one's ground, obviously, so it's zero volts. Next one along is 1.6 volts. And I would say that is almost certainly going to be the analog out for the scanner. If I open the lid, it might change the voltage. No, it's parked at the same position, so it's probably not going to care. And the next one across is millivolts. Next one is 3.2 volts or 3.3 volts, pretty much it'll be. Next one is 3.3 volts. Next one is our ground, I think. Next one is just about a volt. And that's it, yeah, so 12. So if this runs at 24 volts, we can't even use it because I'm not mucking around with a 24 volt power supply just to run a stinking scanning unit. So we'll just, we'll chuck some paper on it and um, see if this voltage changes, but I'm not, yeah, I'm not interested in working with 24 volts at all. It's too ugly. The other scanning units I've had are all been around 3.3 volts. I'm trying to wrangle a 24 volt power supply just for a scanner. It's not worth the effort. So we'll give it a go with a copy and see what happens.
So the voltage pretty much stays the same when you're photocopying so this is just going to turn into a stripped down video now because I'm not really too keen on using this sensor. There's plenty of others that are working around 3.3 volts so let's pull it apart. So we'll see what parts we need out of this, motors, sensors and that sort of thing. Um, first thing first is the power supply. Obviously they have different power supplies for different regions. Region uh, down here in the zone, or two more has got arrows everywhere to pull panels off. And I've never known a printer to be so helpful. And this stuff is all ABS but I feel like it's painted so I'm not sure if I'll be able to use that again. This is all ABS as well. So if we grind it down, we should better make filament. On the end here, we can see there's a sort of acetate sort of ring with some timing marks on it. So this is obviously this will almost certainly be driven by a DC motor. Just to get the timing, this will be for the paper feed because the paper goes this way and it wants to get the time perfectly right not that it's going to be perfect because the motor's going to change speeds and that so <clears throat> obviously we won't be printing rulers on this printer but that's how it'll do the timing so we've got a like a um, infrared sensor there or some description just keeping a look on these fine marks on the uh, on the wheel just trying to suss out how to get this power supply out. I don't see any screws, so maybe there's a clip in here or something. Looks like there's a clip behind there. And there's the power supply out. And the power supply is 24 volts, which is what I was going to that scanner head at 1.2 amps. So we might better repurpose that for something. Hmm. 
just inside here we've got the card reader unit it's going to be proprietary so i don't think i'm going to use it for anything else but if anything we'll better get some gold or copper out of it glass this is the white reference plant I was talking about before for the scanner it just looks at this to decide what white is <clears throat> and here's our scanning sensor itself so the part numbers on here are QK1-3708 or 57Z12 or 4094184F. I'll hold on to it just in case there is some documentation which tells me I'm looking at it wrong, but from what I can tell, it runs at 24 volts, which isn't, you know, practical, really. It's strange because normally there's a glass thing across the top here, but it's obviously just relying on the glass of the scanner. So I'm thinking it's probably just a it feels like it's just a DC motor arrangement in here to run this motor. There might be a um, timing mark on the bottom of this motor, so let's find out. Oh, there it is. There, look. So potentially that is an actual stepper motor. So that's uh, interesting.
the whole sip motor, so we'll test that on my other channel to see what it does.
just a little LCD screen. Um, doesn't look like it's going to be too easy to interface with, but we'll keep it just in case. Tiny little marker switch. I think it's just to tell that the platen's closed. Goes to show the edge of this printer not only has it got an SD card, but it's got a compact flash as well. I haven't seen compact flash for donkey's ears. Hmm. Here's the ink cartridges. This is a um, resistive um, type of printer, so the print head is built into the cartridge, which is um, good in the sense that if there's something goes wrong with the print head, you just replace it with the cartridge and you're back up and running again. But it's bad because the price of the cartridges are high because it's got to include the cost of the, the print head. Whereas the other ones, which have separate ink tanks, they print to a print head which is built into the printer, but if their print head fails, then the printer's a throwaway. So it's hard to say which is best. But for this one, if you have any issues with the printer, you just replace the cartridge and away you go. But of course, the cost of these cartridges. There's more than a new printer.
this is just the timing sensor for this wheel. So it's got a very thin gap there, which this fine mylar guide goes through and just keeps the speed of the motor correct. And along here, you probably can't see it, but there's a very fine, looks like a black bit of tape, but it's actually just got very fine lines going this way, which gives, there'll be a sensor in the printhead, which keeps, tells the control board where the printhead is when it's scanning across. And over here is where the shamble is, where it does the print head cleaning and empties ink into these little reservoirs. It's always a shamble these printers. It's just, just a total mess, just ink you paid for being pumped out. And this one looks like it's got a crazier system than normal. So it's got a massive sponge back here and a pump, an actual pump, pumping toner ink from out of here, out of this area into this sponge here to absorb it all. It's, I've never seen that before, so um, we'll get the pump out and just see if that's the case. But from what I can see, it's got hoses going through the printer, sucking ink from out of here and dumping it into the sponge. Bit of steel will come out down for recycling. Just a couple of sensors there, so if something passes through here, it must be a paper size sensor, something like that. It'll just trigger and tail the control board. It's actually soldered directly into the board, which is unusual, but not anymore.
Another DC motor. For some reason, the screws for these little screws are super tight, so I need to try and my screwdriver, which should fit, isn't cutting it. So I need to find another screw to get that motor out. But rest assured, I'll get it out. And this is a nice big piece of metal to be um, mounted down. Here's sort of the feeder arrangement. So it's got a roller here which feeds the um, paper in, but underneath there's another roller. Which is um, what you call a retard roller, so it doesn't feed two sheets at once, it just feeds one. So this one feeds while the other one goes in the other direction or has a bit of a break on it, and it separates the sheets as it goes in. Big spring. So here's this whole feeder pump situation. Um, you can see it's pretty grubby. So what it looks like is whenever it feeds a piece of paper through, it's using the same motor to um, just, just pump ink out of this out of this cleaning area into this massive sponge at the back, which is just sort of was creepy. In fact, <clears throat> this is ridiculous. There's more here. This is all just drenched. And ink. You can't do anything with it. Apart from put in the rubbish. It's the most. It's the most amount I've ever seen in a machine. I don't keep any of these parts because they you can't do anything with them. They're covered in ink. I don't want to put them in solvents to clean them out, but it's just rubbish.
Okay, one more DC motor. This is the feeder one. Let's see why it's so um, it's geared the way it is because it's probably not a very strong motor. I don't know, it looks like ink material for crinkling the ink, so maybe <clears throat> they were thinking of filling that up as well. This is the USB plug where you can print from USB, I guess. It's probably a really easy way to get that out, but I'm not interested really. So that's the base of it. Ridiculous amount of plastic. <clears throat> Taste of it. Ridiculous amount of plastic. Just keeps on going and going. So if you're going to buy a printer and you don't need a scanner, don't buy one of the scanner because it makes the machine way bigger. Also, if you do need a scanner, have a look at my first video, and there wasn't a flatbed one, so don't get a flatbed one. Do you need a flatbed scanner? Probably not. You're just going to scan one sheet of paper at a time. Do you need a scanner at all? This machine is so huge because it has a scanner. So I'm going to break this down into my bounty and come back after that. Okay, so here's what we got. Quite a bit of metal. Um, probably the most metal I've scavenged so far, steel. Boards, three boards in this machine. Um, probably because of all the extra bits and pieces I did with the um, memory card and USB printing. 24 volt power supply and that scanner unit. Um, I'm not thinking about it now. I've got a 24, power, 24 volt power supply, so I probably could have just stuck with that power supply, but I'll research a bit more and if I find anything else, uh, check my other channel for developments on that part of it and tons of gears wiring screws springs motors we finally got a stepper motor 
So this machine had three motors in total um, and just an obscene amount of plastic. We also got the little LCD screen. Um, I don't think it's going to be too much fun trying to get that going, but if you um, check my other channel as well, I might have some feedback on that. And aside from that, if you want to see another printer I pulled apart, look at this one. If you don't want to miss the next one, subscribe.